All right, we're looking at the gearbox on the 2001 Ford Focus with the, the SPI engine, the single cam engine. So if you have the ZTEC engine, this does not apply to you, but the, the uh, cheaper S single overhead cam engine has the transmission called the IB5, which is what this is. So this is the cable that connects to the gear shift. And this little pin that it pulls on is what shifts your gears. Um, I'll splice in a shot of here of me shifting gears on it. So you can see there's a there's a piece that's supposed to be in here, like a, a little, it's called a collet, and it would snap in here and be held onto this rod and keep the, this thing from jiggling around. It's really scary because this thing could actually pop off if it wanted to, and then I wouldn't be able to shift at all. I don't know how long it's been like this. I went in here to check the oil level and I just noticed it was missing, but it wasn't in the case, so somebody must have taken it off in the past. And well, I went to the Ford dealer and they said they don't make that part anymore, and the only way to get it is it's integrated with the cable, so I'd have to replace the whole cable assembly. Assembly, and it's $147 for the cable assembly, which is not exciting when you have a thousand dollar car. And the other thing is I don't really want to have to take the cable out and re-hook it up everywhere and route it through this, this whole mess up here. So what I'm going to do is build a collet assembly from parts that I get at Pep Boys for less than 10 bucks and put it on here. And uh, that way I, I've read a few cases of people having this problem. and. Um, some of them have said that they've built a rubber washer, that the original part was made out of rubber. So you ju we just need some kind of rubber seal in here to keep this from jumping around, and then we need to put a clip on the end of this to keep it from jumping off the end. And then we'll be good, and the shifting should be tighter and, and more responsive as well. And probably put a lot of grease on it to keep it from, from uh, sticking. So let's see how that goes. All right, so here's your detailed uh, schematic and parts list. So I measured it out. Um, the hole on the inside is five-eighths of an inch, the whole the white plastic thing, and then the pin itself is five-sixteenths inch wide. It's a quarter inch wide. There's a little indentation in the pin that's a quarter inch. It's three-quarter inches long this way, so we need a piece of rubber that's close to three-quarters of an inch this way, but with enough space to put a couple metal washers on either end. So let me just get you a look at that so that you can see what I'm dealing with. Obviously, I'm not an engineer. So what I came up with was shock absorber bushings from Ford Mercury, which are, they're a little wider than I need, so I may need to shave them down, but the inside hole is just about right. This is from the help section. The help section at the auto parts store is great if you're looking for something, but you don't, you know what it's shaped like, but you don't know if they make it for your car. You just go to the help section. They've got all kinds of pieces of rubber and metal and all different shapes that are for purposes that you can repurpose for other things. So we're going to take those and shave down the outside a little bit. Take one of them. And if we screw it up then there's two of them in there so there's an extra. But it's the right width and the hole is the right size in the middle. Got some washers. 5 16 inch hardened flat washers. I don't know if they need to be hardened but I figured that they might as well go with the good stuff. Because they are going to, I mean, every time I shift gears, this is going to take a little bit of stress. So, 5 16 inch washer and the inside hole is just about right. And then for a retaining clip, all right, the proper size E clip to use is 5 16 Originally I thought it was a quarter inch, but it's, that's a little small. So you want to go with a 5 16 inch E clip to hold it onto the shifter shaft. You just snap it onto the end and it keeps the washer from sliding off. Uh, total cost from the Pep Boys Manny Mo and Jack, $6.73. So that's a whole lot better than 147. It's also a whole lot easier than going in there and taking the whole cable apart. All right, here's a preliminary fitting under the car. You can see it's the, the black washer part is too wide and too wide this way. So I'm gonna have to shave some off the outside edge and shave some down to make it a little bit thinner. All right, so I've marked, you can't see it because I wrote it in blue ink on a black thing, but I, I marked around it to the proper size. And now to the best thing to cut it would be a razor blade. I don't have a razor blade, so I'm gonna use this, this uh, X-Acto type knife blade. And I changed the blade. You wanna use a fresh razor blade. Definitely don't wanna use something that's worn or even a regular knife to cut to, through the rubber. And then just sort of slice through it progressively until you get it to the right shape. So you can see that comes real that comes off real easy when you you've got a sharp knife on it. And then I'm just going to proceed all the way around it. Making sure not to cut myself, cutting just cutting straight down through the rubber until I've made a circle out of it. And then we'll put it on the car and see how it fits. 
I'm also going to shave it this way. This is where an actual thick razor sized razor blade would have been handy. But I'm going to cut it down short, cut it down to make it a small circle, and then just slice the back off of it with this razor blade. Uh, this is the Gerber Artifact tool, which is a pretty cool little uh, kind of pocket knife, keychain knife that has an exacto knife blade built into it. I like it a lot. Here we go. It ended up pretty small. I'm not going to win any engineering excellence awards with this one, but it's uh, right about the right size. A little bumpy on the outside, but I don't care. And I, I cut it a little bit big so it'll stick into there and stay there rather than being too small and hopping around. And then I cut a little bit off the edges to make it thinner to make room for the washers and the retaining clip. So let's go down there and see how it fits. All right, here we go. Let's ignore the loud oh, little kids in the background. That's right, I'm filming. All right, here we go. Let's, let's see how this goes. I've got a one greasy washer. Now this transmission area is inside of a little plastic uh, case, so there's not gonna be much uh, road crud that can get in here over time, which is good. So we, we give it a little grease on the washer, a little grease on this uh, shifter shaft dealie. Grease up the rubber washer so i'm just putting grease all over this rubber washer make it slippery we put that in here and then pull it back down get it over here with a lot of grease packed into it might be over greasing it but i don't know if that's the problem i think uh more grease is better than less than Stick the final hardened washer over the edge here. That feels real good, just the way that it fits on there, nice and tight. There's still a little teeny bit of play, but nowhere near the, actually there isn't much at all. Just a, just a little bit of side-by-side -side rocking. The hole in the washer was a little bit bigger than the shaft, but much, much better than what it was. So I think shifting should be much improved. All right, so now we take the 5 16 inch E-clip and put it on the end here, and then we're done. Sorry about the noise in the background. My neighbors pay a guy to blow their leaves into my yard so I can sweep them up with a broom. So that's what's happening this morning. Um, push it on. Yeah, that's going to be a good fit. I wish I had the proper tool for this, but I don't. So I'm just going to bite it on there with a pair of pliers. Click. Done. That's money in the bank. And now I'm going to get up and do some shifting and let you just see the difference from before. So that is much better. Feels real tight. A lot better than it's ever shifted before. And then I just put the, put the cover back on here which will keep all the dust out. And the grease should keep it smooth and slick for uh, as long as I care to drive this car. So mission accomplished. I didn't show you how to take the cover off of the transmission, but it, it just has a bunch of these little snaps. You just lift them up with your finger and lift them off of hooks. So there's no fasteners that you need to deal with, you know, screws or nuts or bolts or anything. It just sort of snaps on. You just have to feel around the whole thing and lift up each of these with your thumb and pry it off of its hook. So putting it back on is real simple. You just get it into the right position. And then just snap it all the way around make sure you catch the snaps on the top the sides everywhere that's good all right here we go shifter test take one oh that is tight that's the way it should be that is proper so there's no slop in the linkage anymore i guess i was so used to it i didn't even realize there was a piece missing but uh it is fast and furious now. Call up Vin Diesel. No, it's on. Speed race at midnight. It's go time.